fed Zeke. And it's like, <laughs> oh, okay, oh. Colleen, thank well, maybe you. Maybe that's Jack's plate. There's no pie on it. I thank don't know. You. What's this? Any bad ways you can interpret it. Tyron Matthew, big congrats to Zeke. Feed the man. He's been fed. He's been fed well. It's always the guys that already got paid that yeah. are quick to congrat- congratulate a guy that got paid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I would feed the man. we got to keep that guy in shape for I like know. nine years. Yeah. And he's got a lot of nachos about. in Cabo. That's baby. what I'm saying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wow. Will Selva is out in the newsroom in Culver City. How hungry are you right now? Will. Oh, pretty hungry. I mean, I love this. we got breaking news early in the morning. Tyron Matthew up tweeting about it as well. Love it as yeah. we'll be having continuous coverage throughout the day here on NFL Network. Meanwhile, another contract we've been waiting on to be signed is that of Falcons wide receiver Julio Jones. Now, by all accounts, a deal is, quote, very close. And where have we heard that before? Hmm. Well, there's genuine optimism in Atlanta. Owner Arthur Blank telling The Athletic that he would be surprised and disappointed if the deal didn't get done this week. Jones is currently signed through 2020 with an annual average of $14.25 million. Michael Thomas is currently the highest paid receiver, inking a five-year deal worth $100 million earlier this offseason. Ezekiel Elliott's not the only running back getting a new deal. Bengals running back Giovanni Bernard got his new contract done. NFL Network's Tom Pelissero reporting it's a two-year contract extension worth 10.3 mil. Bernard part of the dynamic duo in the Bengals backfield along with Joe Mixon. As for the games on Sunday, in particular, the Patriots hosting the Steelers, Pittsburgh facing a familiar nemesis in Tom Brady, who has never lost to the Steelers in Foxborough. TB12, a perfect 5-0 there with 18 touchdowns and zero interceptions. Stopping Brady is number one on Mike Tomlin's defensive checklist. If you're talking about New England, it starts uh, with Tom Brady, their guy under center. Um, I don't know what I can say about him that hadn't already been said. Uh, got a lot of respect for him as a competitor, uh, as a tactician, uh, as a guy that, that operates. His, his arm strength and accuracy is exceptional. Uh, his above the net game is kind of kind of exemplifies a guy that's probably been on his job for 20 years. You know, um, he is very difficult to trick. Um, and even if you do, it won't happen over the extended period of time or over the course of a football game. Brady certainly is their number one nemesis, especially in Foxborough. Coincidentally, Brady and Ben Roethlisberger have combined to throw for 126,708 passing yards, or just shy of 72 miles. Yes, I have been reading the research packet. That is an interesting nugget there, though. Just shy of 72 miles that they've thrown. Hmm. Wow. That, w- yeah. Will's the guy who tells you how much everything in the 12 days of Christmas would cost yeah. in modern prices. And everything. <laughs> Will, and I love it. That's yeah. deep this insight. great. I need more nuggets from Will. Thank you, The Will. turtle yes. doves are very expensive. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike Tomlin, we heard, very complimentary of Tom Brady. Yeah. And, of course, these guys, they're going to have their work cut out for them on Sunday night. It's always a tough game. But right now we have some more on the Steelers. So let's send it out to Aditi Kinkabwala. Colleen, we know Mike Tomlin is never at a loss for words, but he wasn't all that specific about the Patriots on Tuesday. Why? Because he said this first week is really about the establishment of who the Steelers are. He said that he and his staff will be spending this week focusing on a division of labor and who will fit what roles. So now as for that Steelers defense that will face Tom Brady and the Patriots, well, there are three new key pieces here. And the Steelers' hope is that those three new key pieces make them faster on multiple levels in multiple ways. Of course, the most highly anticipated of those new pieces is the rookie inside linebacker Devin Bush. Tomlin openly acknowledged that he'll play a significant role for the Steelers and that he's expected to be a big component of what the Steelers hope to do. But he also said that it will be his job to balance the fact that this is the rookie's first real live NFL game action that counts. And of course, Colleen, it comes on the road against the defending champions in prime time. And so we'll all together see how the rookie handles that moment. <laughs> it's sort of like a perfect setup, to yep. be honest. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is, this is a great game for week one. And we know it's year 20 for Tom Brady. It seems like it's year 2000 for him at this point. <laughs> He's never lost at home to the Steelers. So never, ever, ever. 
So do you guys think that there's any reason that things might be different for him on Sunday night in Foxborough? Because for me, I'm looking at that center position on the offensive Talk line about it, and David mm-hmm. Andrews mm-hmm. and not having him there and having a lot of like just shakiness on the inside of that O-line. You know that's where Tom Brady doesn't like the pressure f- coming from, and that's where the Steelers are going to put it. Nobody knows their team as well as the Boston sports media and the Boston sports fans. And on this show on Monday, I said that the Patriots maybe have more questions question marks than any other team in the league, right? I said David Andrews. I said, what do they do at tight end? And I got dragged for two days on Twitter. I'm going to back it up again and say, I don't know how this team is going to look. Gronk was a number one option. David Andrews is a huge loss. And a lot of the coaching staff has left. Brian Flores is no longer there. It's the second straight year they lost their defensive coordinator. Chad O'Shea, who was the wide receivers coach and a very big voice in that offense, is now with the Miami Dolphins. A lot of change quietly in New England, and they're going to have to change this on the fly. The David Andrews thing, that's a surprise to them. They were not expecting to miss him. And also Trent Brown has gone as well. So to me, like there are still question marks with the Patriots. They'll be great. They'll win 10 games. They'll likely win the AFC East. Of course. But I'm talking on Thursday to Sunday. I don't know what we're getting right now till Sunday with the Patriots offense, and I'm curious to see. Well, no one at this table believes more in the Patriots at the end of the year. They, the only seasons they have are title game seasons or Super Bowl. That's including this one. But I think the Steelers are going to win this game. I do. I'm ready for it. And, and there's a bunch of reasons why. Most of all, you get the Patriots early. The David Andrews thing is big, but you get them early. Peace Rags earlier this week was saying, Bill Belichick's had an entire offseason to prepare for the Steelers. They've never won there. Do you remember when he had an entire offseason to prepare for the Kansas City Chiefs? Mm. And the Kansas City Chiefs went into Foxborough. Not Patrick Mahomes, mind you. Old Alex Smith. Guys, they went up and down the field, did whatever the hell they wanted to a very unprepared Patriots team. Look at Tyreek just waving. There was a reality show about the Patriots at the time. There's a shot of Brady and Giselle leaving the game, and Brady's pissed off after a season-opening butt-whooping by the Chiefs. I know the history of Roethlisberger and Belichick's mastery of the Steelers. I think the Steelers are playing pressure-free. It's a new identity, new season, new era. I think the Steelers are going to win this game. But uh, you still would have to be a beautiful mind to find a silver lining in these numbers, Kyle. I know we mentioned it, but Brady 4-0 at home versus Big Ben, that's crazy enough. I know, I know we mentioned that. But you know what else is crazy, though? The fact that Brady has 15 TDs and zero interceptions. You know what else is crazy? That no. Big Ben has seven TDs and four interceptions. No. And I know it. This is the big Juju year. I'm a Juju fan. Talk to him this summer. We compliment him. But let's keep it real. It's going to be tough without Le'Veon. It's going to be tough without Antonio Brown out there. This is the same team that held Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, Juju Smith-Schuster, DeAndre Hopkins to under 100 yards. And if Juju is held to under 100 yards and James Conner isn't playing unbelievable and Big Ben is shook because the bright lights are there and he's playing against Tom Brady at home against the Patriots, they're going to lose this game. Mm. I'm just saying, it's not as simple as catch the Patriots early. Sometimes there's something you can't explain. And there's, a, so there's some bad juju with Big Ben playing in, in, in New England. Steelers 23-20. Okay. Guys, yeah. huge <laughs> news out of Dallas this morning. We've been talking about all day. We'll continue to see the mega deal. The deal of all deals. He is on the Cowboys. He's extended. He's Till there. 2027. What year was it, Peter? 2027. 2027. It's like four Olympics from now. And we've got first team all dad. Sorry, Philip Rivers. That's my guy. Pro bowler. Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins on the show next. Huge season for Minnesota. Somebody at the table thinks they're going to win the NFC.